Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 267. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Twilight Genesis. G'day. Hey there, Twilight. How are you doing? I'm not bad. How about yourself, Norman? As you can clearly hear by the sound of my voice, I'm doing terribly. Well, you're not dead, so... Yep, that is good. That is good. I'm still alive. Somehow. But still, um... <coughs> So true, not gonna stop me. I've done this on a so true before, so all I can do is just push on and entertain you guys at home. Anyway, it's just the two of us for now. Will might be joining us after his LARP and we'll get to hear him talk about his LARPing adventure in the woods. So if he do join us today, we'll get to hear LARPing adventures. Yay. But anywho, let's go on to the first news. And funny enough, first news comes from Australia where twice. Yay. And it seems that they're going to get episode 12 and 13 this month. So, somehow, over in Australia, there's a channel or uh, what you might call this cable network called Foxtel. And in their episode guide or their TV guide, they're going to have episode 12 and 13 airing on June 20th and June 21st at 3.40 p.m. local time. Um, I'm not sure. When they say local time, is it... West Australia, East Australia, Middle? Uh, it'll be East Australia. It'll be Sydney time. Almost everything gets announced in Sydney time. Yeah, so it'll be two hours ahead from us. So 3.40... You know what? It doesn't really matter because if you go into the show notes and if you click on the links, everything is going to be there. Um, if you're in the UK, that's going to be 6.40. If you're in Eastern, that's 1.40 a.m. And if you're the, in the Pacific, uh, that's going to be at 10.40 on the 19th. Huh, strange. But still, these things are there and we do hope that some Australian brony has the setup to stream it online. That'll be cool. Yeah, I'm sure at least someone within the brony community has Foxtel. That some cashed up brony or someone whose parents didn't want to get rid of it from the days gone old. <laughs> It'll be someone from Sydney too because I don't think anyone in, in WA has Foxtel anymore. And everyone who does is old and probably doesn't realize they still have it. I'm sure they do, like family members or whatever. I mean, I'm sure. I like to think I know most of the Bernies in WA at this point, and none of the ones that I know have Foxtel as far as I'm aware. <laughs> it's just uh, way too expensive. Oh, that bad, eh? Yep. Well, cable providers aside... Um, it is cool to know that at least we'll, we'll get some new content this month because as of today, the 10th of June, we're going to get Royal Problem. And that's the Luna Celestia episode. So that's cool. I, I like that episode a lot. So um, we'll, we'll get more new ones soon enough. So that'll be awesome. Uh, but still, uh, I do hope that somebody out there will somehow record this and put it online for us to watch and then we'll get to have a sneak peek and then we'll just wait for the other episodes to come out soon soon enough. And I'm looking at the calendar and yeah, um, next week will be the last episode for before the hiatus. Huh, that's interesting. Nice. I'm, I'm looking forward to that, but that's because to fill up the hiatus... We finally get the English versions yep. of the Equestria Girls, which I've been waiting for all year, ignoring everyone who tells me to just go watch the Polish version. I, I've seen the Polish version and it's okay, but I, I, I just can't get over the voice. Like, you know what I mean? Like, once you hear the original voice, you, you can't go back. It's like watching anime. Once you hear the original dub, like, you can't go to the English dub for some reason. Uh, I find with anime, it's specifically the version you hear first is mm-hmm. the version you get a, a, a used to, and going to the other one automatically sounds weird. Yeah, so I, I anything, get you. I get anyone you. that's watched uh, anime in English growing up, if you watch that same anime in Japanese, it's going to sound weird. Yeah, but back then, the way that anime is done with the translation, it's a bit corny. Like, they try to change a lot of things, especially that Pokemon Donut thing. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, anything that was translated by four kids is a wreck. Absolute disaster. 
Oh, yeah, Most yeah. of the things have their issues but aren't so bad. At least the voice acting was generally better back in those days as opposed to now where almost everyone is like, oh, these kids are 14 years old, but they sound like they're 27. <laughs> I don't, I would say that. I mean, nowadays with the VAs that we have now, they try, well, most of the voice directors, voice casts, will try to make the English VA sound similar to the Japanese counterparts. Yeah, I think they should try to be a bit more unique to themselves. I, I find they either try too hard or they don't try hard enough, and they just, the voices never match the character that's producing it. Yeah, probably. But still, <coughs> that's for another discussion for another day. But anyway, on to the next news. Trailers, Twy, what do you think about them? I enjoy trailers. I know a lot of people don't like trailers because they view them as spoilers, and I'm like, you know, get over yourself. But <laughs> I quite enjoy trailers because I like to have an idea of what's coming. It lets me know whether or not I should bother to see it in cinema mm-hmm. or just wait to pirate it like a good Australian. I do not endorse pirating if you can afford to buy DVDs. And support the, the 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 product and who makes it do so absolutely definitely do so. But if you're in Australia, where everything is overpriced and everyone's broke and unemployed, <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, my point of view. If you're of not trailer... Australian, then no, you buy your products. <laughs> but anyway, as for me and my stance of on trailers, I like them. They're kind of the hook to get you to decide whether to go watch it or not. It's like one of those things like um, The Bodyguard Assassin. You, you know that movie? The Bodyguard Assassin. Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't ring any bells. It's a new movie starring Samuel L. Jackson and um, the guy who played Deadpool. Uh, who was his name? Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Yes, him. So it's one of those movies in concept sounds terrible, but once you see the trailer, it makes you go, oh my god, this is so out of there, this is so insane, I want to watch this, I, w- I want to see what happens. Or it can have the opposite effect like, let's say Transformers. Oh no, it's another Michael Bay movie. Yep, not gonna watch this one. I know, I'm gonna watch the Michael Bay Transformers. <laughs> They, they've been gradually building up to what Transformers should have been from the get-go. Giant robots beating the crap out of other giant robots. Only for a few minutes before half an hour or an hour worth of human time on screen. <laughs> nah, well, they got rid of all the, all the bad humans and then we got good humans. Well, we'll see how it goes. But talking about trailers, the Pony movie trailers, it's not out. Somehow it's not out yet. So Discord on Twitter, like the tree, is Discord. He asked Megan and uh, MK Toon. MK Toon. Who's MK Toon, by the way? I'm remembering. Mike I'm Vogel. To... Yes, thank you, Mike Vogel. According to the article. Yeah, Mike Vogel. So anyway, um, he he asked, "When is the My Little Pony movie trailer coming out?" Mike just says soon, and it would be really awesome. That's about it. And I I just can't wait. I I really want to watch this trailer. I I want to be swept off my feet and be brought to the magical world of ponies in theaters. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the trailer and I'm looking forward to the swarming in an entire cinema with bronies. If I'm not mistaken, you're going to get it, right? Yes, we, we actually get it, but we get it uh, a month or so later than, say, everyone else. But they're not getting it at all. Just just, just come come to, to WA and then we can go see it, Norman. <laughs> my trace. I get my flight ticket and all. Yeah, it better be your treat. <laughs> <laughs> but still, um, I, I can't wait. He, he, he's overhyping this. I'm not sure he's overhyping it, but I am hyped. I can't wait. Like, soonish, I'm, I'm guessing probably E3? Probably? Who knows? Yeah. I wouldn't say E3, but I'd say soon would at least encompass until the end of the month. Mm. So I'd say it's going to come out at the very latest at the end of the month, but probably in the next week or two is more likely. Mm. So yeah, I hope so too, because 
I can't wait to see the trailer. And yeah. talking about the movies, you seen the My Little Pony poster? I remember seeing the poster when that original teaser that was absolutely horrendous to look at uh, came yeah. out. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. That that poster was not... How do I put this? They didn't really contrast the colors. Like, if you ask any Photoshop guy or any art student, they'll say, why is the color so dark? Is this... This is a kid's show, right? Like, why is it dark and gloomy and dead? <laughs> if I recall, when they went to put it out, something went wrong and all the shadows got bought. And as a result, everything looked really good ugly yeah that, that was for the tv trailer or the tv um teaser tease yeah but for poster the color here is not that good like they, I, I think they kind of forget to change rgb to cmyk somehow <laughs> but still uh, that's the north american side but for the rest of the world we're getting a really colorful poster and though the font may not be the same as the movie glittery poster, we do get the standard font for the international poster with brighter colors and nicer looks. And the ponies are still the same as what we got in the first poster. No, not so much. Remember that has a different pose. Oh, true. But still, it's all in movie if I remember, right? Yeah. Remember that there's only one with a different pose. Everyone else has just been rearranged around the smaller, more standard-looking logo. It, it looks so much better. Yeah, it has that it, oomph, you know what I mean? Yeah, having the characters, they're much larger on this poster than the original one. The original one, they're tiny, and the emphasis is on the big glittery uh, The Movie logo. It's nice, but this international one is so much better. But this is the Chinese... I think so, really, it's the Chinese budget. poster, yeah. I know we're dealing with small horses here, but come on, international poster is much better. Like, uh, North America, what's wrong? Get your game on, man. I, I do hope that this Chinese version here is what everyone gets. Like, uh, what we get down here and all that, I hope this is what we get. Yeah. And America is the only one who gets the, the <laughs> awful-looking yeah. bought one. Yeah, but you do know that somehow I'm guessing that with how posters works, there's probably multiple versions of posters. So maybe we can get the all of the main six and all of the villains and all of the characters that's worth mentioning. So that's one way to look at it. So that's something to look forward to, probably. Sure. They, since I did put uh, release all those extra characters uh, that were going to be in the movie, it would... Stand to reason that they'll probably make posters for them individually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. True that, true that. If, if they uh, do, I'll know about it because they'll be all over my my uh, my cinema. I hope I can get those too. I want to watch it locally. <laughs> but still, um, as for the movie, it's coming out on October seven, so it's a long way to go. And knowing that for a fact. Worries me on the next news. So, Daniel Ingram, we all know him, right? He's the guy who creates the song for the movie. He's the guy who creates, like, um, music like, um, Bad Seed. He, he, I'm pretty sure he's written just about every song in the show. Yeah, that, that's true. So he's done, he's been there from the very beginning. And he recently tweeted that he, well, he created 5,800 pages worth of orchestra part for the My Little Pony movie. And now he just needs to actually play them all. <laughs> so, uh, the music part is not done? <laughs> well, the music is obviously all written now, and they, they just have to record it. Which I know because my mate keeps linking me on Facebook to all of Daniel Ingram's tape. Uh, tweets uh, every so often he started tweeting out short recordings of of uh, people playing parts of the music with orchestra uh, instruments uh, all right so he's been doing it for now okay 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 so i'm guessing that this tweet is just to <laughs> troll us somehow 
I think it's more to show for anyone who would understand uh, this sort of uh, musical stuff how extravagant maybe the music is going to be for the movie or how mm. much music we're getting. Well, at least this is... Um, to me, I'm guessing this is all, all background music because sometimes when a scene happens, you need background music for it, like chase scenes, um, somber, calm music, and so on. Oh well, yeah, I, I'm assuming most of this is probably going to be for non-songs. Mm. But here's the part that I'm confused. Uh, where's Will Anderson? Will Anderson is the guy who's been working on the background music for the show, while Daniel Ingram is doing all of the vocal songs, like the singing part and so on. But Will Anderson is the guy who does all the background stuff, like the things that you don't really pay attention but it's there for mood. So I'm just guessing where he is. Maybe he's doing stuff but isn't just being as vocal because I assume Daniel Ingram is probably more well-known amongst the bronies. True that, true that. But to Will Anderson's credit, he did play with Weird L in his band once. True. Yeah, so that's all cool. But you know what? With Season 8 also being announced, he's, he might be working on that. Yeah, true that, true that. So let's just put that aside and wait for the best because we all we all will find out after October 7th when the movie's out and we can get to watch it in theaters. So let's hope for the best. And talking about uh, background works and whatnot, <coughs> um, Livy Schreiber, 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 Schreiber? Liv Schreiber. I- I'm pretty sure the last name is pronounced Schreiber. Leave three, but you know the guy who played Sabretooth in X Men Wolverine Origins? Yeah, that guy. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, he recently went on a few TV shows and he got interviewed for some of his other movies. Like in NBC Today, he got interviewed and he's talking about his new movie. Chuck, um, it's a boxing film, and if you're a boxing fan, I suggest you go watch it because, hey, boxing's fun. And he plays a good guy over there. And he talks about his, um, career as an actor. Most of his roles when he plays them is playing the bad guy. Uh, luckily enough for his role in Chuck, he's playing a good guy, so yeah, that's good. And in Ellen, he did the same thing too. But here's the thing, <laughs> um, I, I would suggest you guys go watching the video beforehand because it's all entertaining and especially on Ellen, the same thing comes up. Like most of your characters that you played are bad guys, villains. And Levy here mentioned that it just takes one event in your career to make, to define who you are. And that is playing a villain. So when Ellen here, he talked to Leave, like, Leave, was it? How, how, I'm very bad at pronouncing names. It, it might be Liev. Liev? I, I'm not sure. I would have to for a pro, pronunciator. <laughs> yeah. Or but watch anywho. the videos to get to see how they say it on, the, <laughs> on these clips. You. But anywho, um, Liev here, when Ellen said that, hmm, okay, one of your roles is playing in My Little Pony, and <laughs> Liev's reaction here is like, yeah, like Hasbro called saying, um, if I want to play in a My Little Pony movie, and he said yes because it's something for his kids to watch because most of his role when he played them is not really nice or not really kid friendly. So when he gets to play, I, I think he's in, in his mind when he plays in a My Little Pony movie role, he's thinking like, oh, maybe I can get a good guy or something like that. Nope. He got typecast as a bad guy. The Storm King. Ooh, evil. Nah, I'm sure he's not that bad. You know what? No, I want him to be bad. Bad to the bone. <laughs> the biggest and the baddest. Yeah. <laughs> but still, um, he's having a good time. And I, I do hope that he enjoys his um, part here. And I'm not sure if all voice recordings are done. And I don't see him going around talking about his, what you call this, um, part of promoting ponies. So maybe that's one thing aside. I, I don't know. I'm sure he's busy with other things. He doesn't have time to go around promoting the fact that he's in a kid's movie. 
Yeah, probably so. I mean, wait until it pops out in theaters or before it pops out in theaters. Probably the promotional part of the uh, movie thing. So we'll just wait and see for that. But anywho, um, on to the next news. And, well, next news is a bit... Hmm. I, I, I don't know how to go into this one. Twy, you got any idea how to jump in? I have no words for what I'm looking at. Absolutely no words. <laughs> All right, then. So, uh, let's see if I can try. So anyway, um, Halloween is uh, three months away, I think. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four it, months away. It, 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 it's closing in. Yeah, so it's like almost four months away, and we all have ideas of costumes. Maybe some of us wants to dress up like Tracer from Overwatch or Reaper. From Overwatch, or probably some bank heister from Payday, or any other suggestions, Why? I, I was going to make a joke about staying an upper Overwatch character and just suggesting those, but I just blanked after you asked me what, <laughs> for a suggestion. <laughs> Maybe a character from My Little Pony? <laughs> yeah, yeah like, yeah, like Spike the Dragon. Yeah, that, that'll be cool. Yeah, everyone loves Spike, right? <laughs> I, I guess. Uh, but anywho, um, for you guys at home who do want to dress up like My Little Pony characters, you're, you're in luck. Because there's the costume shop called Disguise, our company called Disguise. They're hopping on the uh, My Little Pony movie bandwagon and they're creating a lot of costumes. So if you go click on the show notes and the links, you you get to see what we're talking about, and you can dress up as your favorite characters like Twilight Sparkle, Pinkie Pie, uh, Rainbow Dash, and some of the two movie characters. I forgot the name, Shadow something. Oh, and then like the princess something. I I forgot. Like I'm really terrible. Haven't seen the movie yet. Shadow Tempest. Shadow Tempest. Yes, that's the name. And I forget the princess's name. Yeah, it's okay. Movie's not out yet. But anywho, they have costumes there. And some of the costumes are creepy at best. But, well, it's for kids. What do you expect, right? Yeah, the the, the masks are off-putting, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. Just but still, it's not for us. If you don't like the mask, they have the dress version with the pony ear headband with the hair popping out a bit. So yeah, that, that's um, another cool costume design there for you if you're interested at and home. You've got adults' costumes and kids' costumes. So you can go around dressed as a pony and then you can make your nieces or nephews or little siblings also dress like a pony. Either because they like it or because you want to punish them for... <laughs> And they're eating the last of your chocolate. Yeah. Well, there's that. And uh, you know what? We're not doing it justice because it's it's one of those things where it's, uh, I don't know, maybe dress up past costume party, something like that. It's there if you want to. And honestly, the wigs for Twilight here, it's not bad if you want to have a wig for Twilight cosplay thingy. That's not too bad. So that's a place to get it. So yeah. The face masks on the adults are also slightly off footing, but not as not as terrifying as the, the children's face mask. Yeah, true that. And Pinky, Pinkie Pie has a wig too, so um, it's not like our version of Pinky, but still, it's manageable. It's like a nineteen fifties housewife Pinkie Pie hairstyle. Yeah, still, it, it's uh, there if you want to, and I still say Twilight. Sparkle wig is good. So yeah, that, that's there for you to purchase if you're interested. Um, I'm not sure where you can buy, but probably at Walmart or wherever else. Like, yay. <laughs> good luck finding it. Uh, they probably have a website. Yeah, probably. Uh, but anyway, that's the news for this week. Let's hop on to the next agenda, which is, what have you been doing? So, Twy, what have you been doing, man? Ruminating over the fact that I haven't actually made a video since mid-February, which hopefully I'll remedy by the end of this coming week. But aside from that, I've been playing a lot of Warframe. I played a bit of Battleborn today, because they have a free trial out now. And watching cute anime. 
like watching all of uh, the first season of A Love, Chinibo, and Other Delusions, mm-hmm. as well as Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Oh, how do you like that? I- I've seen it and I-, I enjoyed it. How about you? I I quite enjoyed it. I think it petered off a bit uh, towards the end. Like it sort of got a little on the dull side from how it started. But I quite enjoyed it overall. I'm actually probably going to make a video about that as well. Just put my thoughts into a video and throw it up. Mm. All right, that's cool. And I kind of see what you're getting at because I enjoyed it from start to end. There's some parts where I felt that it was a bit slow. But I do enjoy the segment where they were at Comic Cat, a Japanese convention. It's a really popular Japanese convention where it's the Japanese version of Comic Con. Yeah, that was a nice episode. I I think some of the other episodes were were better, but uh, overall quite good. Kana and Elma are my favorite characters. <laughs> uh, I forgot names, but still, um, that show is. Good. I, I would recommend it. What about you, Toy? Would you recommend it? Oh, definitely. It, it's. I, I recommended it when I put my thoughts up on Facebook uh, in my private account. So I definitely recommend it for anyone who isn't looking for something that's too over the top or with its comedy or too feelsy with its drama. It's just sort of nice and relaxing. Yay, I would agree on that. Well, for me, I've been, well, how do I put this? I did nothing much except doing the whole standard thing of playing a bit of payday just because I want to get some safes to sell off on Steam and a bit of Overwatch because this weekend is the double XP weekend. So, yay, trying to milk that double XP thing for what's it worth. But besides that, I've watched Wonder Woman. That was a really good movie. I've heard that it's quite good. Yeah, it's surprisingly good. I might go see it, but on the other hand, saving up money for spending at Sea PonyCon, yeah. which I am officially going to now, Yay. is um, much more important. If you get the chance, maybe you can um, watch it in the plane. Probably it has it yet already, who knows? Maybe. Mm. Uh, it's only <clears throat> been out here for like a week or two, so probably not. By the time Steve Panicon rolls out. Yeah, but aeroplane movie listings are really strange. Uh, let's just hope for the best. But still, I was surprised with how they told the story. And it's really interesting with what they've done with the character. If you've seen the DC animated movie of Wonder Woman and her origin story, that is similar to the comics. While this Wonder Woman is not the same. It has a different story arc to her. Like she's... A good synopsis is in the comics or in the animated movie, before she left the island, they had to do this whole challenge thing of of which warrior would go to the world of men. And Wonder Woman or Diana here is forbidden to enter or participate. After the whole competition ensues and the winners decided... Um, it's Diana, princess of the Amazon. So she's the best of the best and, well, she will go with the human to the world of the men. And that timeline there is kind of our timeline, the early 2000s or early 1999 so, so on. But while in this movie here, it's way back in World War Two, And there's no challenge or battle. It's just Diana... Sleeping away, going to the world of the men. And that's all I'm going to say. There's a few differences here and there, but the movie overall is good. And it doesn't make the lead character seem overly too powerful. And uh, I, I'm not sure how to put this. You, you know sometimes when they create a female character who is overly powerful? Yes, a good example is Alice from Resident Evil. Ah, uh, yeah. Do you remember that character and how do you feel about her? Alice was just sort of boring. She's the, the the quiet badass, super strong and powerful, but had no no interesting features outside of is the badass. Yeah, and with Diana here, she's the badass, but 
she doesn't really portray that she's the baddest. She's only doing her duty, which is, I must go and defeat Ares, the god of war. And that's her MO for the whole part. And as we travel with her, we get to learn more about her sense of duty and her realization of how this world is different. And it's a really good watch. I, I really would recommend it to people who are on on the fence on watching this or not. I, I highly recommend it. And here's the part where I'm worried because DC made a really good movie. And I'm not sure how they're going to take this moving on forward. Because most of the movies that they did were not the greatest. They're good, but not the great. So... The next one coming out this year from DC and Wonder Brothers is going to be the Justice League movie. So let's hope that that movie is good. Let's hope. Hopefully they've learnt from their mistakes. From what my friend told me, the Wonder Woman film felt a lot like the first Captain America film. Oh yeah, it it does have that. Like It has that feel. Except for the whole um, Wonder Woman using her shield as a projectile weapon. <laughs> so hopefully they've learnt that trying to be as dark and gritty and edgy as they possibly can, and while, while giving their characters little to no reason for anyone to actually care about them, hopefully they've learnt that that's not how to make a good movie. Yeah. Or at least not a good superhero movie. Yeah, like... I do have to say that the Wonder Woman movie was dark, but given the uh, era that it was in, it was granted because it was in a World War II setting. Everything was grim, dark, and there was no life in it. Everybody's dead and whatnot. You you get what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. The the World War is a, a terrible thing, very dark. It's not a happy, cheery time to be alive. Yeah, and there's a good example at the start of the movie where the island where Wonder Woman lives or Diana lives is called Temescara. And that place is very colorful, luscious greenery, clear blue skies. And when they go to the world of men, it's drab, dark, grim, clouds are dark smokes everywhere there's no there's no there's no much blue skies like it's really grim you can definitely feel the mood shift there and i have to say that they did a really good job that's that's definitely something i'm interested to see if they can continue with doing that for uh justice league if they can not just throw everything into a vat of ink to make it as dark as possible at all possible moments. <laughs> uh, we, we'll have to sweat and see because Zack Snyder was directing the movie before he had to step down for personal reasons. And well, let's just hope that the director's vision is still intact and we get to see the movie for what they want. But so that's been my week. So anywho, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. If you want to reach us on the Twitter, the show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. And as for me, I'm at Roman Sanzo. And Twy, where can the good people find you? They can find me under Twilight Genesis on DeviantArt and Thin Fiction. And they can find me under Double Pint Productions on Facebook and YouTube. And on Twitter at Midnight underscore Pint. Alrighty then. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyverlife.com and also please subscribe to our latest project which is the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there you will get me, Silver and Sapphire talking about the My Little Pony episodes, comics and movies and also we'll do other things or we'll talk about other things like the like comic books or other shows for instance and some other random things like probably samurai jack probably and also if you'd like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com slash the mbs show where over there 
we have two rewards. We have the awesome tip jar, which a dollar will get you uh, thank you at the end of the show, and will get you access to deleted episodes or deleted uh, contents and uh, early access to the review sh- review and discussion show. And we have the amazing tip jar, which for five dollars we got you the same thing, but still. It's one of those things where if you're willing to donate that much. Still, anyway, um, I do hope that you consider supporting us. And as I said, thank you goes out to Lurker Cat, Toronto Genesis, Namjagatoria, Starstream, and myself, Lag. Thank you, uh, y'all, for the support. It really means a lot to me. And with your guys' help, I'm, well, I- I'm just thankful. Thank you, guys. You're very welcome, Norman. Yay. So anyway, um, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Twilight Genesis. And will I see you... N- uh, I can't speak. Will I see you next week? Where probably I'll be better and don't have a sore throat. I hope so. Because this has been going on for over a week. <laughs> hey. uh, see you guys. Bye. Cheers. But anywho, um, <laughs> I'm not going to get used to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I was, I was hoping that wouldn't happen. But, uh, uh, <laughs> I get a new phone and it goes off whenever I get something.